You ready? Yeah. We got this. And the air was full of thoughts and things to say. But at times like these, only the small things are ever said, and the big things lurk unsaid inside. I didn't want to do this TED talk. Every time I public speak, my heart races, I freeze up, and no words can come out. So when Azalea invited me to do a TED talk on the God of small things and our friendship, I was hesitant. But soon I realized that this is a story worth sharing. Her even considering me to do this talk with her planted the seed for me to embark on this journey to really conquer my fear of public speaking. If it weren't for her small action, I wouldn't be here in front of all of you and the thousands who will watch later online. Little events, ordinary things, smashed and reconstituted, imbued with new meaning. And suddenly, they become the bleached bones of a new story. Our talk was inspired by the novel The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. It's a story about twins who were separated at a young age due to many factors. A little like us, I suppose, except we're not twins. For context, when we were younger, we'd been very close. We would talk about anything and everything every single day. But as we got older, we no longer talked and laughed. We formed our separate cliques, and we were left with only a small wave on the side, on the, down the end of a corridor. The twin separation, and up until this semester, actually, we even started to cease to acknowledge each other's presence completely. And the twin separation was, due to, was the result of a chain of events born from family history and socio-political issues. We connected over our shared empathy for the twins and resentment towards the universal themes of suffering and inequality, such as caste, gender inequality, religious conflict, traditional beliefs, and post-colonial inequality. These ideas were presented like arbitrary flashes of an old film role. The most profound moments never came in the big, dramatic scenes Rather, always in the cracks, in the dust of preserved butterflies, in the oil on the side of a pickle jar, in the deep dimples of a mother's cheeks, and in cold bottles of orange lemon drinks, always in the small things. Things can change in a day. Azalea told me that she found The God of Small Things to be a very hard book to read. The language seemed convoluted. Cultural concepts and character names were foreign to her, and historical references were beyond her grasp. Yeah, for me, it was just another homework assignment on top of a long list of academic responsibilities. And that was the case up until Tasha and I had a conversation about the novel for the first time. I remember seeing and hearing the timid girl I'd known since year four so passionately share her views about the novel her eyes were lighting up and words were fluently and loudly pouring out. I was taken aback and amazed. I couldn't help but also to be filled with her enthusiasm and thus be motivated to finally finish the book and learn more about the context. From then on, we started to talk more frequently. At first, we would always talk about the God of Small Things. And gradually, we started talking about other books as well. And now, whenever we have a thought to share, often a small one, like what we found in the attic or old memories of befriending flies. We know we can always come to each other for a safe space and a good laugh. The secret of the great stories is that they have no secrets. The great stories are the ones you have heard and want to hear again. The God of Small Things, it was the story of Esta and Rahel, the twins who were separated, and so many others and their family members who have suffered. But for us, it represents something completely different. The God of Small Things represents our story. The two people brought together by such big themes, forming a friendship of their small things. Being Indian, the God of Small Things taught me details that I never knew about my ethnic background. I was so happy to finally read and analyze a novel in English class that was by an Indian author. 
I buzzed with excitement at the prospect of actually understanding references and names that I didn't need to search up. But actually reading the experiences of the characters made me realize that there was still a lot I didn't understand. But discussing these issues with you would always help. I had convinced myself that because of my public speaking anxiety, no one would treat me as an equal. But when you asked me to do a TED talk with you, I felt seen. I didn't realize that this would make such an impact on you. But now I just want you to know that you've come so far from where you were at the beginning of this journey. It was very arduous work, but I could not be prouder of us than right here, right now. And also, I am so proud and honored to be finally standing on a stage with an open mind, a story to share, and most of all, a friend by my side. To celebrate our story and add some color to everyone else's unique ones, we'd like to assign you all two homework assignments. One, read a novel. To take it a step further, you can find a reading buddy and experience firsthand how transformative and unifying literature can be. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, go speak to someone to whom you haven't spoken in a while. That can be someone you drifted from, someone you're afraid to talk to, someone in your community or family that you started off on the wrong foot with. Find out how they're doing and reconnect. By sharing our journey with you all today, we just hope that everyone in this room can go on about each day with more kindness, passion, and acceptance. And that will be the best thing you can ever do for yourself and all others in your life. Thank you. Thank you.